All right, 50,000 subscribers. This is a heck of a milestone as it represents the halfway point to career levels. As it stands right now, I'm making a fair bit of cash from YouTube monthly, but it's not enough to sustain it as a job, and that's the end goal. So, uh, yeah, thanks a million for helping me get farther than I ever deserved to, and let's get right into that long promised Q&A video. I've cherry picked 36 questions from the pile, so let's see how long that takes to get through. Question one, how did you feel when you saw that turbulence but it's a military history of World War II went viral? Well, I was delightfully astonished. World War II Turbulence, for those of you who don't know, is the famous SFM animation Turbulence, but I inserted a bunch of history jokes into it. I have to say, I wasn't expecting it to do as well as it did in the slightest, as it quite literally spawned out of a late night shower thought, but I can't really complain that I got a fat handful of subscribers and a fair amount of attention for it, so hey, that's neat. Question two, how do you feel doing variety content? And also I would love to see more horror related content from you. I freaking love doing variety content, but it just doesn't get as many views as TF2 videos for now, which is why I don't do it that often. In terms of horror, <laughs> I freaking hate horror piss off. Question three, do you ever have times where you're overwhelmed with videos and need a break? If so, how do you relax slash unwind? Yeah, I get the idea that everyone on YouTube kind of has problems with mood swings. Whenever I'm feeling down, usually I just spend some time unwinding with a mindless strategy game. Hearts of Iron, Total War Warhammer 2, just stuff like that. Question 4. Are you ever planning on doing a face reveal? Another thing, how did you get the name Sam Wiz? Uh, face reveal at 100k. I'll set that in stone. Funny thing about that is my first video on this channel, which is now obviously privatized, had my face in it, as did a lot of my other early videos that I've taken down since then. So there is an incredibly small group of old guard in my community that have seen my face before, but they are few and far between. And as for the origin of the username, that's a secret for one mil. Get me to that if you want to hear it. <laughs> Question 5. Favorite TFTuber and favorite SFM video? Favorite TFTuber. I suppose I'm legally obliged to say Soundsmith, given how similar in style my channel has come to mimicking his, and just given how much of an inspiration and well honestly i've just bootlegged a lot of stuff from him to be honest favorite sfm video the winglets burning through space without a question masterfully done to the last second question six why did you begin recording tf2 and how did you meet your current circle of friends i began recording tf2 because i knew it was a game with a large enough community for me to build a base in which i'll expand on in an upcoming question as for my current circle of friends most of them were either irl friends before i started on youtube or they were simply people that i was friendly with on my discord before it got so big that i had to pick and choose and then flee to private voice chats i kid you not multiple of my current friends that i play with a lot I met on a death run server one time because I was playing as the death guy and I would literally blackmail the opposing team to either face a merciless round at my hands or subscribe. If I saw my subscriber count go up during the round, I'd give everyone a free run. Good times. Question seven, do you ever plan on collaborating with Soundsmith or other major YouTubers besides the ones already in Neanderthal Park? I mean, that, uh, that's really out of my hands. I don't really like reaching out to people unless I have a legitimate reason to do so. And the recent honor bound tourney gave me an excuse to open contact with a lot of people, which eventually resulted in a line of communication between Big Joey and myself being established. I sent Soundsmith a business email with an invite, but he never replied. So I'm thinking my odds are slim on that front and it'd be rude to press it. As for other major YouTubers, it all relies on contact. I don't have a legit reason to go out of my way to talk to them, so they'll have to talk to me first if they want to do something. Question 8. Why do you like history so much? Also, what's your favorite general area and period? As someone who also loves history, I'm curious. Okay, I love history because it's just a massive depository of stories that have actual value for us. I think it's fascinating that we know so much about the world around us, and as it used to be as well. And I just love hearing about stories without worrying about names and dates. As for a favorite period of history, I know this sounds cheesy, but I'm a romanticist for World War II. It was a terrible thing, yeah, but it was the last truly righteous war that we fought. It was a war where men and women volunteered to bleed and die on foreign shores in a final desperate battle to protect freedom from the great menace of Nazi Germany. And there is no more just a death than one sacrificed selflessly in the name of preserving others' right to simply live. America has since forgotten how much blood was spilt in the name of freedom. There have been times when just hearing those war stories, I'd bend over and cry just for the knowledge of how far we've fallen from that noble height. Only we had another shot at a righteous rallying cry. Question 9. What is your opinion on your sub-communities? I desperately try not to think about them. I don't want to know. <laughs> Leave me alone. Sub-communities are not my problem. Question 10. Who slash what inspired you to get into YouTube? RT Game. I didn't watch the guy as much when he was playing TF2, but I watched from the sidelines over a six month period as he went from a little over 100,000 subscribers to over a million. Just watching that meteoric rise from what was previously a little more than another TF2 channel stroked the ambition within me. And that's where my brain first realized the scheme of using TF2 to build a subscriber base before eventually moving to variety content. Question 11. How long will the Q&A vid be? I mean, you can just check. 
I guess if you're hearing this, you can probably see how long it'll be. Question 12. How are you doing, brother? Is COVID putting ideas on hold and how are you handling these tumultuous times? Man, COVID freaking sucks. I haven't got it, but... I've been in varying shades of quarantine since this time last year, which has been great for the channel because I've had a lot of extra time to put into it, but I miss making friends someday. Question 13, favorite video so far? I am super proud of the Honor Bound Tourney video. The amount of effort that went into it was immense, but it was so worth it. It's the perfect combination of gameplay, comedy, and commentary extended to an hour and 21 minutes. Oh, and by the way, I also made Hitman 3 videos. Go watch those. <laughs> Question 14, where do you plan on taking the channel now that you hit 50K? Also, do you like toast? Well, I plan on doing roughly the same thing I've been doing until I hit 100K at least. What I've been doing so far has seemed to work at least a little, so let's play it safe until I have a bigger base to work with. My next video, after this one will probably be a compilation of Fallout New Vegas clips, so a variety of content isn't entirely out of the question, but hey, TF2 still has priority for now. Question 15, how many games do you have in your Steam library, and how many have you actually put time into? Well, <laughs> uh, I'll just let the screenshot speak for itself. Question 16, if TF2 were to die from the bot crisis, what would you do? Also, who is your favorite band? If TF2 ever outright died, like the server shut down, I imagine I'd simply move to variety content ahead of schedule. A risky move to be sure, but unavoidable in the case of a TF2 death scenario. Favorite band? Real talk, Imagine Dragons has made some great stuff. And rip Avicii. <laughs> Question 17, if you could go back in time, what would you change? I wouldn't change a thing. I've done a lot of scummy stuff in the past. Some of it I'd gladly take to my grave, but I believe I've learned from what I've done and it's directly contributed to who I am now. For every mistake I've ever made, it's improved me by at least teaching me not to make that specific mistake again. Baby, I'm still standing. <laughs> Question 18, how do you get into TF2? Is there anything you wish you knew when you first started the game? An old high school friend of mine first introduced me to TF2 when I was in my freshman year. Slightly more innocent ninth grade me was, of course, horrified at Meet the Pyro, and I couldn't play the game at all until I got a better PC years afterwards, but that was my first introduction. As for what I wish I knew when I first got into the game, dude, I wouldn't want to give myself a spoiler alert. I've treasured, or uniquely hated, every second of learning this dumb freaking game, and I wouldn't trade that for the world. Question 19. How did you come across your heavy load at, and what is your favorite soup, and why is it Campbell's chicken noodle soup? I think I think I constructed my loadout by looking at what heavy cosmetics were cheap and just picked one of the cheapest unusuals money could buy. Then I added the Wild West Whiskers to hide that stupid string the Zarbush has. Dead of Night may be a basic B cosmetic, but hey, still looks good and I am unashamed of common style. As for soup, I'm a Seattleite, so clam chowder all the way. Question 20. How do you feel about absolutely destroying Spencer in that bet you made? <clears throat> Up yours, Spencer! <laughs> Question 21, do you think that we could ever see any other Valve games on the channel? I mean, I've never played CSGO and I've never done Portal 2 multiplayer, so I could see doing either of those at some point in the vague future. Could be fun. Question 22, are you ever gonna do another tournament slash tourney? If so, will it be melee or guns in what class? I could see doing another at some point in the future, not sure what it'd be on though. Some have suggested a 6v6 style bison tourney for the heck of it. <laughs> Question 23, what games are you planning to play in the future? Are you getting tired of TF2 or do you still want to make content on the game? In the future, I'd love to just play whatever catches my interest. Everything from old nostalgia games like LEGO Star Wars to more new games of similar caliber to Hitman 3. The goal of this channel is eventually to manage the transition to variety content, though how I do that I have yet to figure out. And as far as TF2 goes, it's still fun so I'll still play it. Besides, even if I did get tired, I still need that sweet succulent profit. Question 24, you should explain to people why you started this even though some of the OGs know. Oh yeah, for those of you who don't know, this channel originally started as a bet between myself and my good friend Spencer on the Discord also known as The Steel Nerfer. As we were both thinking of experimenting in getting into YouTube and... Well, he abandoned the idea of pretty early on, though he still occasionally makes videos that I'm sometimes in. But I kept going. The bet was that each of us would beat the other to a thousand subscribers. I won. Question 25. How do you feel about the modern entertainment industry and their addiction to sequels and allergy to taking risks? Man, the Star Wars sequel series freaking sucked. <laughs> episode 7 was by far the worst in the series, just given how insanely much it bootlegged from episode 4 for nostalgia value. Don't, don't even compare it to the comparable masterpiece that is the Phantom Menace. Gosh. Okay, in all seriousness, the modern entertainment industry is cheap when it should be risky, and when it's willing to go risky, it usually goes too far into the downright stupid. There's not many people in Hollywood who know how to tell a good story that's both unique and believable. Question 26, opinions on jorts and cargo shorts. Jorts, I can't approve of them, but I won't stop you. Cargo shorts, freaking cash, dude. I love having extra pockets. Question 27, will you ever play Hat in Time? Probably not. I, I'm just not that interested in the whole genre of mimics kid games. Games, if you know what I'm talking about. Hat in Time, Bug Snacks, etc. Just 
that whole genre doesn't really interest me that much. Question 28. I know that one politics video was a one-time thing during the thick of the election, but how are you feeling about the Biden administration this far in the year? Well, it's nice to not have to hear crap out of the White House every day. Don't get me wrong, I do have enough beef with the guy. Mostly on his failure to personally condemn China for their numerous violations of international treaties, but it's certainly a lot calmer now than it was under the dawn, and I like that. Question 29. What would happen if you gave the cashier a dollar for a drink that was only 99 cents and they didn't give you that one cent? I would thank the cashier kindly for not making me take a penny. The inner strength of my minor OCD would be pleased at the exact cost of one dollar. Question 30. How did you come up with your username? That, sir, is a question with a story behind it and is not one I'm willing to make clear just yet. That'll be my one million subscriber goal. <laughs> I'll get to know what exactly Sam was one came from, and I know I've already answered this question in a previous question, but screw you, I'm putting the emphasis on this. Here's hoping one day I'll be able to tell you. Question 31. How do you feel about transgender people such as myself? I really want to know since you mentioned you were a conservative in your political video. Well, this one was inevitable, so I might as well let the cat out of the bag before it happens in a way I don't have control over. I'm a Christian, and although I'm not very good about it, I try to follow the Bible in most things. Basically, that just means don't be a douchebag and don't go against God's will. When it comes to the topics of reality and the philosophical implications of intent and creation and all that mumbo jumbo, the Bible usually has something to say on it, and that's usually what I try to stick to. In the case of sexual identity, the Bible is pretty clear that male and female are deliberately created and that it's God's intent that you are born exactly who you are meant to be. At the end of the day, I'm inclined to stick with my faith over fully bending to modernity, and that naturally puts me in a point of contention with people like yourself. We live in the land of the free, so I have no right to try and stop you from wanting to believe something contrary to anyone else, and I don't want to try and stop you on that matter. It's not my fight, but I can't truthfully say I support it. I try not to be a douchebag about the whole thing, but that's a really fine line to walk when I simply don't believe in the legitimacy of what someone has made to be a core part of their identity, so... Well, at the end of the day, cancel me on Twitter if you want, but I follow a faith that is quite simply, quote, transphobic, quote, which means... It's not unreasonable to loot me personally under the same title. Call me old-fashioned, but as long as I'm not actively going out of my way to mock someone for it, I think I have as much a right to believe as I do as you have a right to believe what you do. That's the beauty of freedom, and it's a darn shame freedom is losing value in America today. Man, I can't wait to get canceled! Question 32. Do you ever worry about your political content spilling its way into other unrelated content like TF2? Political content can be a tricky thing to balance when you're doing other things that are not related to it. Basically, do you ever worry that your political content might create a toxic environment in your community? Nice follow up to the last one. Yeah, I figure it's inevitable that my politics eventually take a toll on my gaming. Whenever I see pointless toxicity in my comment section, I make sure to just block the individual responsible and just call it a day. But so far I've been pretty lucky in that a vast majority of people who leave politically motivated comments have either been positive or neutral. But then again, I haven't really said anything filled with controversy so far. I think the whole I'm kinda transphobic thing is probably the most extreme you'll get out of me, so I figure if I can say that and survive, I should be fine in everything else. And in a worst case scenario, I'll just keep doing as I've always done, and I'll just ignore the comments. I hope it doesn't come to that, but eh, I'm not giving up. Question 33, can I be in this video? Dude, totally. Here you go. Question 34, what's your social security number? Question 35, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Uh, only as much wood as a woodchuck could chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. Question 36, final question, do you have crippling depression? Depression? Eh, probably. Given the definition involving vast amounts of laziness and lack of motivation, along with unreasonable tiredness, I probably do have some extent of it. Crippling, though? <laughs> Rarely. It does get to me on occasion, and I will spend multiple days at a time literally doing nothing productive, but that doesn't happen often, and I usually pull out of it within the week. And that's all I've got for today. I know we've covered a few of the hotter topics, so thanks for y'all's support through this mess, and here's to another glorious, inevitable growth spurt to inevitably reach 100k anyways. Thank you all so very much for watching this video, and any of mine that you've watched in the past, and have a great rest of your day. I'll see you around.